Hi, I'm Shannon McKinnon, host and media producer at Cybercrime Radio. Welcome to Let's Talk Sock, a cybercrime magazine podcast series brought to you by SecureWorks, a leader in cybersecurity, empowering security and IT teams worldwide to accelerate effective security operations. Joining me today is Nash Borges, Vice President of Engineering and Data Science at SecureWorks. We're talking today about why AI is not a panacea for threat detection. Welcome to the show, Nash. Thanks. It's great to be here. As the VP of Engineering and Data Science, what are you and your team responsible for at SecureWorks? Yeah, I lead the engineering and data science teams that are responsible for Tejas XDR, or Extensible Detection and Response, as well as Tejas VDR, or Vulnerability Detection and Response. And the, the promise of XDR is that we go far beyond just endpoint telemetry, and we take in data from network and cloud and email and identity providers and efficiently analyze all of that data at scale and isolate the threats that matter. And the challenge is that it's an incredible amount of data to ingest. And we have you know, a very thoughtful system that is processing all of that data. And how we maintain a very high signal to noise ratio is something that we're always kind of tweaking and, and improving over time. So we have teams devoted to extensibility and just you know, working with all those different types of data. We have teams devoted to our own agent that is a piece of software that runs on your computer and collects telemetry looking for, again, malicious behaviors. We have teams devoted to detection that I think we'll be talking about today, from signatures all the way to AI and machine learning. And then other teams devoted to context and prioritization and just making sure that we're representing the, the threat intelligence um, that you know, we collect and process every day, and investigation and response and making sure that we're visualizing and educating our users on what we're seeing in the data and an orchestration engine to, to automate response actions. So it's really a wide range of teams devoted to kind of the end-to-end -end workflow of, of managing a security operations center. Before we jump too far into this, how would you describe artificial intelligence or as you're saying, AI? It's a catch-all term and it's used in many different ways by many different stakeholders to refer to many different things. And historically, if you go all the way back to the 1950s, it was coined soon after the invention of the programmable computer. And the thinking was that we could create an electronic brain if we could encode all human knowledge about these relationships between pairs of entities. And so, for example, if you know that a bear is a mammal, and a mammal is a type of an animal, then you can infer that a bear is also an animal. And at the time, of course, in the 50s and 60s, there was very limited computational power. And humans had to create all these relationships. And even if you did all of that, it's still a very limited model. You know, it's hard to process imagery and video and, and things like that with just these relationships, for example. So in the 1970s, funding started to, to run out as this didn't achieve the, the general artificial intelligence, the ability to mimic you know, human intelligence started to, to become a, a problem. And we entered what's called the first AI winter. And then in the 1980s, we had a very different approach that emerged called machine learning. And you can think of that as a subset of artificial intelligence. It's just one collection of, of techniques where we're trying to let the algorithms learn from the data directly. And that is often a much more focused task. So you might have systems that are trying to recognize objects in images to build a self-driving car, or you might recognize the words that I'm saying and turn that into text from audio, or you might try to translate between different languages. And so it's a very focused task and we've made a lot more progress. Um, in, in commercial applications using machine learning uh, recently. The strategy is that rather than encoding those, those rules by hand, we can let the algorithms learn from themselves and in our case, distinguish between benign activities and malicious activities. And that's really the, the promise of machine learning and, and deep learning in particular. That's a subset of machine learning and, and that's come into vogue in the last decade or, or two where we've had a lot of clever algorithmic improvements and again, vast amounts of computation that's available today has, has helped deep learning and vast amounts of data that, that we have in SecureWorks, but there's, it's really you know, just growing 
exponentially with every year and, and all the information that's available to, to tech companies nowadays. I think you're taking us to a really interesting point, which is what role do you think that AI plays in threat prevention and detection? I think it will play an, an ever increasing role in a few areas of cybersecurity, and that's threat prevention that you mentioned and, and detection and prioritization and probably response as well. And when it comes to prevention, you always need to cover the basics. So, so file-based malware detection is, is something that's had a long history. And we're involved in an arms race between threat actors and defenders. That started a, a long time ago in a much simpler time when antivirus was really all you needed to protect yourself. And, and you could rely on signatures and heuristics and looking for strings and rules and patterns to distinguish malware from benign samples. But of course, the malware authors got smart and, and started developing techniques to evade that using encryption and obfuscation and packing and polymorphism. And now it's very common for machine learning and, and AI to play a part in this detection of malware. And that can be done either locally or that can be cloud-based. And it's a fairly mainstream. When it comes to prevention, you can never kind of rely on this being 100% successful. You also want to detect anything that you might have not prevented successfully. And so, for example, we've recently released our hands-on keyboard detector, where we're looking for malicious activity when threat actors are not using malware, and they're just living off the land using system administration tools that might go unnoticed by other endpoint technologies. And that capability is something that, that we focus a lot on. How do we you know, detect things that, that might have gone missed by other systems, or they might be using zero days that you don't have a signature for, for example. And then finally, pr prioritization. So we're collecting not only telemetry, but also alerts from a lot of different systems. And those systems are sometimes noisy, and you want to make sure that we're not just putting a lot of noise in the face of our customers, and we're prioritizing the alerts and the threats that matter. And we're often using machine learning and AI to do that prioritization and learn what sources of alerts are good and what sources of alerts are tracking the threats that, that we're seeing uh, for all of our customers. Those are great points. There's a lot of hype around AI. Do you think that it lives up to it? That's a great question. I'm a, an interesting mix being a natural optimist and a pessimistic scientist. I, I think AI and especially ML can live up to the hype, but it has to be done properly. And there's you know, a few caveats, especially in the cybersecurity industry, where this is a very challenging space that we're in. And most of the commercial success of AI has, has really been associated with what's called supervised machine learning. So you have the data that you're trying to process, and then you have the predictions that you care about making. And I talked about recognizing objects and images or turning speech into text. And that requires you know, labeled examples of the things that you're trying to identify. So for us, that's usually malicious activity. And it can be hard to come by lots of labeled examples of malicious activity, depending on you know, how many customers you have and how many malicious actors are going after those customers and that kind of thing. And so that can be a challenge when you're trying to use AI and you, you really want to focus on that malicious activity. And so second, I, I think the belief that some companies out there have that, that anomaly detection can be used to, to learn about benign behavior and then generate meaningful alerts when something malicious happens is a little bit more fantasy than reality. The digital exhaust that human behaviors in enterprise environments create is really hard to model. And anomalies are very common. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they are malicious. And so my mantra has always been kind of focusing on the malicious activities and, and keeping the threat in mind when you're using data science and AI in general. And then finally, the, the data imbalance in the cybersecurity industry is unlike many other industries. And we process over 400 billion events a day. 
and that is you know an immense amount of data. And so if you think of building a detector that is 99.99% accurate and you're just looking at one of those events by itself, you're going to be you know, searching for maybe a dozen true positives in any given day of, of really malicious activity amongst a sea of 4 million false positives. And so you would just be drowning in noise. So there's some very real problems that, that we face in the cybersecurity world when it comes to using AI in this very kind of adversarial environment where the threat is constantly changing and we need to constantly adapt to their behaviors. Nash, did you say 4 billion a day? I said 400 billion events per day. Um, and that ranges from NetFlow to DNS to process events to user authentication logs, huge amounts of data. And, and just kind of, you know, processing signatures is, is a challenge and, and you're facing that amount of data. And then we want to use AI and we do, but you have to be smart. You have to, you know, look for patterns and, and ways of decomposing that data. And, aggregating evidence over time and about different entities that you care about and threats that you've seen and, and you know different kinds of behaviors and in our case things that we've seen in our incident response engagements are invaluable what are the threat actors actually doing and how can we learn from that and use that to detect them in the future Final question, Nash. For any cybersecurity leader who is looking at how AI integrates into their overall defense strategy, what advice would you give them? I think one really good piece of advice in this industry in particular is, is trust but verify. And what are the error rates associated with AI in real world scenarios? So that can involve you know, just kicking the tires and, and making sure that you're doing proof of concepts and actually trying out the technology on, on your data. Our hands-on keyboard detector, like I was mentioning, processes tens of billions of events per day across hundreds of different customers. And we only create one or two alerts, if any, on any given day. And most of those end up being true positives. That is incredibly hard to do. And you have to be very conscious about your signal to noise ratio. Another bit of advice is don't fall for the hype. So what are the specific use cases that you're hoping to solve with AI? We talked about threat prevention and detection and prioritization here, and response is another key area. But make sure that the use case fits the technology. You also want to make sure that you're able to leverage what we call the network effect. So there's a lot of customers that you want to, to learn from and, and observe malicious behaviors from. You don't want to have to react to a threat actor in your environment as the first time you've seen that threat actor. So do I get the benefit of a system that has trained on a large amount of data before? Um, or do I have to wait for it to learn about my specific data? And how long does that take to happen? Is that weeks before I can realize any value? And are there any feedback loops in the AI and, and machine learning systems. We've talked about how adversarial the relationship is with threat actors. And so if you're not constantly adapting, your models are going to start to become inaccurate over time. And then finally, the, the overall mantra that we often talk about is make sure that you're rising, using the right tool for the job. So deep learning can achieve incredible accuracy rates, but it requires a lot of training data. And sometimes we don't have that in cybersecurity. And machine learning is very powerful but you really want to make sure that it's focused on malicious activity. And we're not just using anomaly detection to find things that are unusual, that are usually just noise and things that you don't necessarily care about. And then other times you just might want to count things and find things that are rare, and that can be very powerful in itself. And so you always want to make sure that you're combining the best of human intuition when really smart analysts and artificial intelligence when looking for really important needles in immense haystacks. Thanks for joining us today, Nash. Thank you.